Pokemon has been around for over 25 years, and in this time, countless rumors and myths have made their way into the fandom, some integrating so well that some of you may still be fooled today. What's up trainers, it's Zakas Gaming, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video as we dive into the first myth on this list, Hypno's agenda. So the first myth on this list leans into a bit of creepypasta. Hypno's dex entry hints to the fact that this Pokemon kidnaps children and takes them to its lair. Due to an internet story going viral, a rumor spread that if you booted up a copy of Pokemon Pokemon Gold and played until you encountered a Hypno, there was a chance upon defeating it that instead of fainting, it would instead force the player character to its cave and then the screen would go black. Togepi was introduced to viewers in the first season of the Pokemon anime, which takes place in the Kanto region. Because of this, many of us believed Togepi to be a Kanto-based Pokemon, which probably would have been the case as the anime originally was never meant to have other regions. Be that as it may, because people thought Togepi was from Kanto, many thought you'd be able to obtain it in the Gen 1 games. The rumor was you could head to Mount Moon and search for its egg with an item finder, and after walking a certain number of steps, you'd be able to hatch the egg into a Togepi. This led to people spending countless hours trying to complete a Pokédex with a Pokémon that actually didn't exist in the first iteration of the games. And since this wasn't true, we would have to wait until Gold and Silver before Togepi actually became available. Here's a myth that actually turned out to be true. The missing number Pokémon was a rumored glitch Pokémon with no sprite, no dex entry, and there was also the possibility of it having save corrupting capabilities. You could encounter this Pokémon off of Cinnabar Island after a series of convoluted, complicated steps. And fun fact, it was due to this myth that so many people believed that you actually could find Mew underneath that truck. Let me know in the comments section down below, were you one of the few people that actually found the missing number Pokemon in the original Red and Blue games? Probably one of the most known myths on this list was the idea that button mashing increased your chances of capturing a wild Pokemon. And we see Poketubers do this all the time, Purple Cliff is famous for smashing the B button. Of course, there is absolutely no merit to this, but I do it anyway because because it makes me feel better. In the year 1999, the Expert Gamer magazine played an April Fool's prank that ended up tricking a lot of readers, where they described how to obtain Yoshi in Pokemon Red and Blue. It involved one copy of Red and one copy of Blue, and by trading a Dratini, evolving them into a Dragonair, and then trading them back, that somehow its final evolution had this chance to, instead of evolving to a Dragonite, would finish as a Yoshi. Before we dive into the last myth on this list, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video, because it really, really helps out the channel and don't forget to comment down below what myth you want us to cover in the next video. So we do go over this rumor in another video in greater detail. However, there was an idea that there is a second Pokemon war. Most of us are familiar with the legends that occurred in the X and Y games. However, there are other in-game mentions of an additional war that may have involved the Kanto region. Lieutenant Surge mentions how Pokemon saved him while he was out in war, but he couldn't be more than about in his 30s or 40s, so obviously we aren't talking about the ancient war that almost tore the Kalos region apart. And there are allusions to this also in the black and white games. There is also an unexplained lacking of young men found throughout the region. But that is a breakdown for a future video, so let me know if you guys are interested in that. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Don't forget to check out this video where we do go into more detail about the Pokemon war and some of the allusions to what was going on in the second one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.